and we are live and now i am rocking up and down mark <laughs> finern how's it going man going good and as we usually do a little musical intro yep here we go folks <laughs> brace yourselves you might want to turn the volume down if you're at work <laughs> Ah, memories. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we were gathered here tonight uh, to discuss the future of Enterprise Tribes with Mark Finneran. Uh, and yes, I am going to ask him about his departure from SAP, but that's for a later video installment. So you're going to have to wait for that one. But anyhow, um, Mark, this is a significant evening for you. You are <laughs> now the captain of a houseboat. <laughs> Yes. That means that means those of us that have gotten addicted to your treehouse video shoots. This this is it. That's this is it. The, the outro for the uh, treehouse um, yeah. webinars. Uh, I, I so I'm a little sad about it, but I'm super happy that we got it organized Friday night for you. You're going to yes. New York tomorrow, and same for me. I have to move a lot of stuff still this weekend. And so, uh, but it's Friday evening here, five o'clock, and sun is coming down. And um, so, super happy that we are able to do this. Yep. And uh, soon you'll be taping, I'm sure, for the viewers on your houseboat. <laughs> yeah. um, so, we should practice our Captain My Captain. <laughs> uh, Martin Gillette gr greets me often. And that. Yeah. Always warms my heart when he does. There you go. <laughs> uh, a new a new meeting to adrift, um, literally adrift at sea, but it, I think it's going to be great for you. So, uh, so I want to just kind of start by I want to get into some of the lessons you've learned about enterprise tribes over the years, but start by telling the peeps uh, what have you been doing? When did you leave SAP exactly? Has it been like nine months now or longer? Uh, but, 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 no, it's like May 2015. Okay, so it's we're moving in on on two, two years. Yep. Wow, time really flies. So, what have you what have you been up to? What What do you do for a living now? I, I thought we first introduced me for the people that don't know all the things that I've done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please say whatever you. Say. <laughs> I grew up in Germany. Uh, Started there computer science, and funny thing is that back then I uh, developed uh, neural networks, and now it's like one of the hottest things. Uh, everything plus AI plus machine learning. So, hey, you were only uh, off by thirty years, man. What? You were only off by thirty years. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Started with SAP, uh, implemented SAP software in Germany, uh, back then even R2. Mm -hmm. And then R3 came out, and I uh, was in a team that made it easier to implement SAP software. So it used to be two years, even for small and medium companies. And, and uh, with using tools and, and, and technologies, I, we brought it down to an average of six months implementation time, and that was pretty amazing and I did like uh, products and then marketing for it and and then I was uh, in the team of a handful of people that started the SAP Terminal Network in uh, 2003 and uh, one thing that was happening there I grew into the role of being the community leader uh, and, and what was fascinating was on one hand being able to influence the tools itself on the other hand, uh, seeing how I can get the community up. And my focus back then was how can I bring out the passion in the community? And that was guiding me. And that uh, really guided a lot of, of, of the decisions that we made. So hmm, how do I get the passion out? In, I give them a voice. I give them uh, um, a reason to be there. So we from the beginning let them blog on SDN even if they are from SAP and so on and how do you get the passion out too by creating face-to-face -face meetings so um, 
I then thought, hey, the developers, the coolest thing for outside developers is to go to SAP themselves and uh, walk the halls where the software is developed. So we created SDN Meets Labs in Palo Alto, in Waldorf, in, in Bangalore. So that people came to that event. And, and there was like the nucleus of the top community influencer program. So we did it unconference style. That was totally new back then too. Um, hey, come and write your uh, session down and uh, present. And that was the first time that uh, a Thomas Jung would present his stuff at an at an event and and that uh then uh morphed into the sdn day and top community influencers again took it and said hmm, this is really cool we would like to have that not only once a year how about we do it locally and that was the nucleus for the sap inside tracks that are now happening worldwide 25 times a year, if not more. That's my, my last number. Uh, and that is so powerful because it is an event that is not organized by SAP marketing, but it is organized by the community and the most passionate people from the community share what the latest and greatest is, what they learned, what they did. And, and, um, and SAP was just supporting it with a little bit of money for food and drinks and all the rest is organized by the community. And that is one of the biggest advantages of developing your own enterprise tribe. So I, I realized with that passion thing that uh, there are a handful of people that are doing um, the majority of the lifting and, the, and it's really cool to be around them because their passion is um, bringing you to, to, to be passionate to. And I think just, I still, just, to, just to cut in there for a sec, Mark, I think no. uh, I wasn't around for all of that history, though you and I got to know each other about halfway through that uh, when I joined the mentor program that you had right. uh, helped to launch, um, which we were a part of for a number of years. But um, right. The, the thing that I, I always get when I hear this type of history from you and other people is that that it doesn't feel very corporate, which is really interesting. Like it, it fe in, in some ways, it feels like somewhat seat of the pants, but not totally in a bad way, right? Like you were right. inventing a lot of stuff as you went. Um, one interesting lesson from all that is how much freedom you guys were given at that time. Um, you, were, you were given a lot of rope to do something with, right? Um, and, and I think what's what's powerful about that is that it really allowed people to think very creatively and boldly and and imaginatively without really fear of repercussions right they weren't sitting there saying oh what will my manager think in my kpi meeting next week about this or that right it was it was much more about boldly striving forward and as a result of that what you guys didn't realize at the time is you were developing these pillars of 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 how you build an enterprise community that's now become very, very strategically important for companies for a lot of reasons, including how people buy and assess software purchases. Exactly. So nowadays, it's like common knowledge, 67% of all um, of your decision to buy software or anything more or less is done before they even contact you, before they even go to, their, to, the, to your website. And so who are the influencers then? Well, it's your extended network, it's your community. And that is why it is so important to create this environment of excellence around your top community influencers that are then um, spreading the gospel and, and, and doing cool stuff. And, and Mark, one thing I want to add to that too, I think you make a really good point about this, the, the way in which buyers research and, 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 and the community around a software product really makes an impression on them. But also with so much software moving towards subscription licensing uh, and, and often cloud-based licensing, what's happening is that Go Live ends up just being the beginning of a relationship uh, more than ever before. And so I think also the community has a tremendous impact in being able to retain those customers, right? Because right. community is how they feel confident, for example, that their concerns are getting addressed, that they feel advocated for and represented. 
and have a forum to connect with other with their peers as well. And I think that this is something that that people uh, forget that uh, a, a software decision uh, in the enterprise space is like a marriage, you know, and and right. you want to be where um, you feel comfortable and you where you feel hurt and um, and and so uh, yeah. That 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 is a big big part of the decision where you say, oh, here are people that I'm doing cool stuff and I feel at home here. They they help me if I'm I'm struggling, and that is what what your strong strong community is doing for you. Right now, um, before we get to what you're doing now, is there anything more? Were there any other pieces of the puzzle that you picked up at SAP that relate to what you're doing now? Was the mentor program part of that too? Another sort of pillar, if you will, of your approach? Or yeah, absolutely. So uh, then realizing that these top community influencers um, are doing the heavy lifting and are uh, doing cool stuff that you want to be part of, I then created that initiative, the SAP Mentors. Out of the back then, what was it, two and a half, three million members, uh, we selected at the beginning or got nominated and then selected 75, and now it's 150 worldwide, and they are the beating heart of the community and also the community voice. So it has, has different pillars. It has a pillar of, yes, where the SAP mentors are or where your enterprise tribe is, is where the community is happening. Wherever there's a, an event, a larger event, um, find the mentors and there's something cool happening. Yeah. Right. And, and I think the other interesting thing about the mentor program at SAP is that from what I know, there's really no exact equivalent of what it is you guys built there. Um, there are a lot of similar programs at other companies that that are essentially programs of experts, right? Uh, so, I, I, you the, what is the Oracle Ace? Oracle Aces, uh, Microsoft MVPs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I thought what was really interesting about the mentors was this effort to try to identify people who were genuine leaders, right? The right. Ex, the expertise in the product was was understood, and that had to be there. Um, but there was another piece of it that I thought was really interesting, and it led to fascinating discussions right because what happened was before that the sort of the highest level you could achieve was sort of a topic leader type of person on the community network which right. essentially meant meant you accumulated a number of points based on your participation right. when, the men, when the mentors were created and i talked to craig schmehill about this quite a bit he called it the path to recognition but what i think it did is it raised the bar for the entire community in terms of what type of person should we look up to and aspire to being, right? So instead of just being an expert and the person with the most points, it had to do with who's making a unique contribution that that really makes a difference in the lives of pe customers, partners, everyone in the community. And, and I, I really like how the values shifted around that. I don't know what you think, but to me, that was the big takeaway. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, for, for pointing that out. Um... And, and that it is not only the co the online community that people can, came through. There was like ASUC, uh, exceptional members of ASUC. There was uh, then then different people that just did amazing things, not necessarily online, and that um, and that yeah, thought leaders. Because that is the second pillar that that uh, as being the voice of the community. So, yes, being active, but then also the voice of the community, where we brought them together with the executives through webinars that were happening two, three times a week, uh, and at face-to-face -face meetings, Sapphire and Tekken. Right, and and the other interesting thing was just pulling in people who were on the edges of the community. So, Craig Schmehel used to talk about how. Uh, that, that experts might be internal voices, but mentors were external voices. They were able to connect with a broader constituency. And when I was invited to become a mentor, it was because I was writing on this wacky stuff called business process expertise, and uh, or BPX at the time, which I'm still a big 
fan about, but that's a whole different story. It come back. Uh, <laughs> well, it's still, <laughs> yeah. we still need business process experts. I don't care what anybody says, but anyway, um, but I was approached for, by you guys and I was not that active, like on the classic community channels at that time, I was doing my own thing. And, and I think that was another way in which the program was very different is they, they, there were a lot of external voices. I mean, even, um, I encourage a genomic colleague, Dennis Howlett, who, if anyone knows Dennis, is one of the most <laughs> unlikely people you could ever imagine to be a part of a program like that because, frankly, he can be a pain in the ass, but he's also very outspoken. He had given SAP a hard time on a number of occasions. And by bringing someone like him in the fold, it was kind of a, a very clever move on your part. And and I think it really shook up the notion of what that program could be, you know? Yeah, and and, and, and I mean... He, Dennis, really brought in, uh, for example, he was the driving force behind the Uma Cloud um, uh, uh, and, and, and sketch. The um, quality is not jump, uh, uh, job number one. It is being fucking amazing. It's job yeah. number one. Uh, and, and and he had the idea and I ran with it and Mark Yolton was giving the money for it and, and also um what's his name? Um uh, from from the blogger program. Um Mike Frasino. Mike Frasino also gave money and so that was a concerted effort. Uh and just a other- quick just a quick side note, we did Hugh actually changed the sketch to being freaking amazing. <laughs> For the purposes of being able to present it to executives, that was the only change that was made. Yes, 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 and and um, I'm grateful that he was um, an artist who is okay with with um, adjusting that. Uh, but it was amazing. So we got every mentor one and we gave them another one to give to someone who is in the environment of SAP and freaking amazing doing a freaking amazing job and and taped that and 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 brought that out and and that really opened doors and really started uh, conversations and created the network and that new weaving of the network with these passionate people and 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 experts and thought leaders and also from the fringes that that was an amazing mixture that that uh, really really made a huge difference and the executives loved to talk to them because it was this unvarnished feedback that they were getting from them uh, and 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 they told them where north is at the in the market at the moment and and uh, that, that they like that well right because I think the the, the the criticism I have of most community initiatives is that I think most of them are, in my opinion, a little bit neutered, I guess you could say, in that they're focused on a lot of good deeds in the community, but not so much on this piece you're talking about, which I think of as advocacy. I think of it as advocating for customers, advocating for developers. And 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 the fact of the matter is that kind of transparency is very difficult for companies. And and look, I, I'm convinced it was difficult for SAP and, and still is sometimes every company struggles with this, but it's this notion that that we want to expose some of these more difficult conversations. But what we were finding is that those transparent discussions were actually what moved the needle. And so when you look at things today, like some of the progress SAP has made on, for example, developer licenses, which used to be like a huge, utter pain in the ass to try yeah. to accomplish, like a lot of that came out, not just from mentors, we shouldn't limit it to mentors, but mentors were a driving force in that type of dialogue right um but then they would become infamous infamous sometimes for certain blog posts right like there's still a legendary blog post that i could refer to as the kiss of death but it had to it had to do with a a product that one of the mentors thought was being sunsetted and that kind of thing creates a lot of um intense scrutiny and discussion so it's a very challenging and interesting way to approach community i think yep so that uh, and one of the things that I learned from uh, bringing uh, the top community influencers together in the mentor program and is, you know, these uh, experts and, and, and thought leaders don't need more KPIs. You have to write five blog posts per year. No, 
uh, to motivate them, you have to do that differently. You have to not, uh, uh, yeah, have a, have a, have a list to check off, but to aspire to their own imagination and aspire or inspire them to uh, create an environment of excellence. And so what I then did instead of um, KPIs, I said, hey, this is, let's work on a document, which I call the SAP Mental Magic Foundation document, uh, on what we aspire to. And that was something that we all agreed. And then you could then say at the end of the year, hey, uh, so if I look at that document, what did I do to fulfill that, which is, be a spokesperson for the community, be active in the community, however that falls out, and be be humble. So yes, you get the bigger megaphone, but uh, that is also creating some tension of us against the, the rest of the community. And so uh, whatever we do as mentors, uh, we try to involve as many as possible and are interested in and so on and so on. And then one of the things that I realized was what a playfulness, mm. what a role that plays in that creation of the environment of excellence. Right. And that was uh, the open, the more or less what opened my eyes was, was the, the welcoming reception for, of new mentors. So at every large event, there's a mental reception and new mentors get their shirt, the one with the Twitter handle on the back and, and their own number and name. And, and so they come up and give the shirt. And someone from the mentors, I don't recall who it was, like, hey, we should do something with the new mentors. And, and I hate hazing, but I said, oh, yeah, how about, hey, here's a microphone anyhow, uh, sing a song. And I didn't realize what horror that can induce in people um and 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 so apologies to to that but what we and and people wanted to run off stage and and say i can't sing and then we said hey just a lullaby or happy birthday that nothing more and we heard great lullabies from all over the world which is cool but then um they start to sing and others join in and applause at the end. And that is more or less um, creating the stage for saying, oh yeah, here I can step out of my comfort zone and others will help me if I stumble. This is a safe space. And so that is creating trust. So what I realized with like playfulness and trust is like going like that. Mm -hmm that you really create an, an, an environment of trust. And that enables then things like one year in Madrid where we had the TechEd and Sapphire at the same space. And uh, jokingly uh, from the stage, um, the MC was saying, hey, you geeks in the audience, be kind to the suits. And because we allow this playfulness, some of the mentors said, hmm, okay, how about we give every suit a hug and take a picture and put it on social media? Which at the beginning was very awkward. So the, the executive knew what is happening and the, the mentors were very careful first evening. Next, year, next day, it was already the mentors, hmm, whom have we not hugged yet? And the executives were like, where is my mental love? I didn't get a hug yet. So that totally brought these um, broke down the barriers between these uh, these people and created deeper network relationship through that. And so that playfulness, and so I had a discussion with the mentors and said, oh, shall we add that to the mentor um, magic foundation document? And that was a big discussion because some consultants said, hmm, wait a sec, I have a reputation and uh, if I'm too playful, my reputation goes. And so he said, mm, you don't have to be playful, but you have to tolerate playful of others. And then when I left SAP 
and said, mm, someone else has taken our mentor program over, one of the biggest conversations was like, how can we make sure that the playfulness stays with us, stays in the program? So from, oh, discussion, we are not sure, to it's really important. Mm. And, and that is one of the elements that I am bringing now to other organizations to say, to break down barriers, to create an environment of trust, to create an environment of excellence, bring elements of playfulness into your organization, into uh, interactions, so that uh, people love to work with you, be part of that amazing uh, thing that, that we do. Yeah, and I think the... We could talk about some of the legacy of what carried on, but I, I would argue that that notion of playfulness is one of the things I would point to that has carried on from when you were there because you still see that at SAP events. At the Tech Ed I went to in Barcelona, they had a jam band on stage, which was the jam band was originally a community event, you know, in the community space, and it's become a, a big thing. And, you know, some SAP executives performing in the band on stage and you know, and it was cool to see that that carry on a little bit. And, and you do realize how doing the unexpected like that changes things. And while I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure that everyone completely enjoyed the jam band performance. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. I, I think it beats the crap out of the canned music that you would typically hear at the end of a keynote, right? Um, these are people from your lives and your community that are up there on stage. And I thought that was pretty neat. Yep. Well, the other thing is that that 5K run that we did because uh, Bjorn Gorka is an avid runner and I said, hey, Bjorn, let's do a run with a wolf pack uh, one, one evening or one morning uh, in Las Vegas, 6 o'clock, and we did that and other mentors loved it and went to the tech team and said, hey, we should do that every year. And now that there are like 300 to 500 people uh, that run there every year down the strip, six o'clock on Wednesday morning. And again, creating a network effect in people that you bump into and, and talk about, uh, talk to uh, before or after. And, and I totally love that that is continuing. Absolutely. Okay. So let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do five, four, three, two, one. So now that you're now taking this out, you're a consultant now taking this out to other companies. Right. Uh, what What would you? I think you've done a good job of articulating the the benefits of of what a uh, you know sort of a passionate enterprise tribe can do for a company. Right. Um, but how how does one get started down this path? So first thing is to um, assess where you are with your community. You know, if it, how many members do you have? How active are the members? And and to to find that there, there's like a, a community life cycle. So uh, from from lurker to or, or also you go through it when you when you join a new new community. You lurk first, then you post a question, then you answer a question, and then you do webinars or whatever. So it is something that you assess first. Okay, where are where am I in that life cycle? And there, that is number one. Number two is that you get executive buy-in. So have someone who is uh, giving you air coverage if, and there will things come up where, where, where people are like, uh, wait a sec, how, how is that possible? Uh, and, and, and where you need someone to say, yes, that's, is, that's okay. So my best example at the beginning, when we started... SDN with, with blogging, and there was a blog post back in the day at the beginning, oh, ABAP, oh, oh, these are the, the challenges of ABAP, oh, oh. And, they, and I got an, a phone call, hey, take that down, this is a, a SAP property, and how come that there's anything negative out there? And we had to fight that and say, look, if you want to create a real community, you have to have um, voices, and you have to have then, you have to then post uh, counter arguments and they were like what we need to now someone who is like a high paying uh, 
expert to answer this this uh, blog post and we said yeah and so then horst keller originally who was like the guy around aber back then about books already wrote an, an uh, uh, a blog post around why with arguing why about oh, is good and that was the kickoff to horst keller being active and seeing, oh yeah, here here are other uh, other community and got active and 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 promoted his books and is still really active and so that's that is number two. So that I I was fortunate that my boss back then said, yeah, this is how it is. Uh, we we continue on that road. So right. that is number two. And then uh, what I do these days, and which I didn't do uh, at SAP with the SAP Mentors, is create a steering committee. And nowadays, SAP Mentors have a steering committee with all parties involved in the organization, support, marketing, product, uh, sales even, uh, and, and community and all that. So and have key people there that are understand the community aspect. And nowadays it's not that that hard to get these people, but these are then for you, the people that help you select the right mix of, um, of your tribe. And these are then also the people that open the door when you say, okay, now we have the tribe, let's do a webinar and talk about where we are and, and let's let's create that network so that uh, better products are developed. Or then, okay, marketing, what is your plan? Or here, uh, community, tell us about the next twelve months, and and then uh, they know and can influence and 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 improve. And that is where where uh, uh, that that great effect comes in. So. By having them part of the product life cycle, part of the community decisions, uh, they get more active and they are then also more passionate around the product and, and, and help you be the best that, that the company can be. Right. And in a piece you sent me recently about bringing out the passion in the community, you listed four things, some of which we've already covered. Uh, be playful, give them a voice give them status, make it possible for them to shine, and bring them together face-to-face. -face. You've covered a lot of that. Were there any other things you wanted to mention there? Um, so, dun, dun, dun. yeah, so to, to round it up, I think that that then, um, so once you once you know where you are in your community development, when you and you have your uh, executive sponsorship, then find uh, and your and your um, uh, 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 steering committee. Then find get nominations from the community for for the first tribe members, and then select them, and then create an identity around them. So uh, with GE, they have the Predix platform which they call the internet, uh, the industrial internet of things. So every sensors that GE um, products have uh, go through that products platform. And so GE people, turbines and, and trains and are builders. So we, we create then Predix builders as an as one of the the elements, uh, uh, as the anchor of yeah, I can identify with that. So create an identity, and and the community can help you with that, and and do that with the working out loud is one of the the elements that that help you with that. Uh, don't go with a fully set thing. No, say oh, this is what I'm thinking. What do you? And then take that right. input and make it your make it the community part take advantage of the of the so-called iterative dialogue that you're having to make improvements as you go yep. uh, rather than roll things out the door that are tone deaf to the customers in the community totally the exactly. only the only other thing I would I would add based on since I'm a member of the media I think about this a lot is 
these folks are really influencers, just like media members are, are influencers. And I think they should all be treated with similar approach when it comes to media. Essentially, you should learn to perceive these folks as members of the media, because that's really what they are. And so you would never tell one of the members of media, uh, you can't write that blog. <laughs> you don't you don't get to control the media. That's not how it works. Now, certainly you can have understandings, like for example, in my industry, we will be told this is under embargo until this date, or right. there's, there's an NDA on this piece of information, and you and you want and you honor that. Um, but but as far as like, oh, I didn't like what you said in this blog post. Sorry, that that's yeah. that's out of bounds to me. And I think so, I've seen some of these programs get into trouble by thinking that these people are not are not part of that, but they are. They're part of the media. It's very simple. So they should have free and open expression, unfettered access, just like the media. But at the same time, you can hold them accountable to 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 make sure they get the facts right and everything else. And the, there's another element. So you have your big event, and there is a press program there is an analyst program have your tribe as part of that especially exactly. in the evening when there are uh, the the reception um because you can only benefit that these uh top community influencers these experts are mingling with press and analysts because they can answer the the deeper question and it it, it gives you uh and 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 uh, it, it proves that you are not hiding anything, more or less. And oh, the other thing that, uh, let, let me finish, um, yeah. that, that the mentors always told me is at the end, they want that SAP is successful because then they are successful too. And this is why they are the harshest critics. Right. But on the other hand, they are then also the ones that hold, hold up the flag. Well, yes, and having been in a lot of those sessions with some of the more well-known analysts, I can vouch for how much the analysts appreciate being mixed up with subject matter experts like mentor or community leaders, because those people just know the product in a much deeper way. And they can ask different questions and they can verify certain things that, that, the, that, the, that the analyst who has a much broader view doesn't know. And for the, the community leader, they get a much broader view. So that dialogue is one of the benefits of, of, of creating a true influencer program that doesn't separate people into these little camps so much, but mixes them together where they can add a lot more value. Or a benefit for the executives as well. There's a question around, oh, um, what about your app store, da, da, da. And then they, the executives can say, oh, over here is a mentor. Who is using the app store? Uh, what is your experience? Mm -hmm. now, now, and having said that, and I don't want to get too far into this, but, right. but just, just because they're a member of the media, it doesn't mean that you can't offer them training. And I think that's one thing that if you're worried about these kinds of things, you can certainly put, I'm not saying don't put people through some training around relating to executives, relating to the media. I think that's totally fair game. Um, I'm just saying don't muzzle them, put them as part of the media in general. Great point. So, so yeah, media training, absolutely great, great right. advantages and benefit. Um, but with the understanding, hey, you're just, it's your voice, but here is things that help you uh, work with. Right. And keep in mind, some of these folks, these experts are from customer sites, and that's enormously valuable to have their voices in these discussions as well. And, yeah. and also small partners and individual developers. And all those voices are so important in, in any kind of a, a discussion with executives. So, okay, Mark, now I've got a hard question for you. Um, <laughs> Me, you, you and I are both wary of over analyzing metrics around community work uh, right. because we know that that at, there comes a point where putting things under like a so-called KPI microscope can really drain the energy out of what you're doing. But right. but you know we're both enterprisey guys. We understand that you have to eventually be able to point back to real tangible ROI and and success, right? Right. Um, so what are your favorite ways of trying to measure the, the progress of, of a community initiative? So oh, one, of the, um, one of the messages that I used was how many SAP inside tracks were happening per year. So 
because it is a, a big effort and it is a, a something that uh, really makes a huge difference for that local community again network creation so that for me is a is a big big, big um, part of it the the second part of it is um, success stories, capturing and sharing. So, um, if you have impact, capture it and share it, um, and, and in a blog post, in a in a webinar, however, uh, and that is for me the the second big uh, measure. Um, you can go into uh, Community in general, uh, you can measure the how many how many problems are solved and and, and things like that. And and I think the community roundtable does a good job in regards to these other measurements. Uh, but for for the advocacy group, for me, these are the two uh, big ones. Meetups uh, are they self organized and and how many worldwide? That is a a great pulse check and and to um, the success stories and that is something something that you have to put uh, uh, make it easy and ping people and have a, a form that people can fill out hey something happened here duh, 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 quickly wrote down and then have someone else follow up and 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 actually write it well that was one thing I noticed that seemed to get better uh, as in the last years I was a part of the mentor program was much more documenting those so-called magic moments or, or great moments as they were happening. Right. More attention to that uh, rather than like waiting and, and what, what happened last year, right? Does anyone have a picture or a video? No one does. Uh, instead, like filming it as you go, tracking it, sharing it as you go, creating slide decks to document all that stuff. Um, the, I would also add that, it, that for people who are a little more into like hard ROI numbers, other things I think can work pretty well is you can probably document the impact on support costs over time. Um, you can probably get into lead attribution a little bit as well. You have to be careful. But if you develop pretty sophisticated lead attribution schemes, you can trace some of that back to some of these events and some, some of the kinds of dialogue that happens. Yep. Um, and I would also add customer satisfaction surveys to the mix as well. Um, build in community questions into those surveys so that you can monitor how people rate the community experience over time and how important it is to them. Yep. All right. I want to ask you a little bit about your decision to leave SAP, but is there anything else you want to talk about first? No, I'm fine. All right. So you were at SAP for a really, really long time and, uh, that must was that scary to to put that behind you? That must have been a really tough decision, but you did it so decisively at the time. How hard was that? <laughs> um, I just thought that I that the success I had with the with the SAP mentors, I, I just saw the big need uh, to bring that to other organizations and and um, to to not only do it at SAP. And so um, I thought that was a good good moment to, to do that. So is it really more about, for you, is it more about the opportunity outside of SAP or or did you also have this sort of sense that, that you know, well, it's just like on sports teams, right, where after a manager's been a manager for a number of years, it's kind of like, well, maybe it's time for a new voice or it's time, I've done what I can with here. Was there, was that part of it too or? Yeah, I, I, I think that, um, New thoughts had to come in, and new, new, new ways to do stuff. Uh, otherwise, it would have continued to be just the Mark, Mark Finland show, as they sometimes said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, what, what, what would you say to other people that are, that are sort of, perhaps a little stuck in their current situation, or realizing that it's time to move on, but they're, they're a little wary of of moving from something established to, to hanging up that, that sort of free shingle, what would you say? Um, try it out. Um, do some, some good groundwork so that you are, uh, 
not totally in, in, in so, so that you have some business lined up and then um, do it and try it out. You only live once. And what have you learned so far? I mean, you, you've been independent now, moving in on two years. Right. Uh, as far are you seeing that other organizations indeed have are wrestling with similar issues and, and needs? Like, what are you finding so far? Absolutely. I mean, uh, there are m- many more of these tribes coming up uh, at organizations. What I see is often that it is from a department out, uh, like marketing department is is driving it, and then it is a marketing department driven thing. Uh, and 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 the big big advantage of of uh, your community tribe, um, as I envision it, or as I I see the the, the biggest advantage is then uh, that it is going beyond the department, beyond the silos. So, uh, and that is not easy to set that up that uh, there is traction in the development of product, there is traction in marketing, there is um, in support, in training, uh, education, all that, um, certification. So uh, to be able to create a, 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 an enterprise tribe that is firing on all of these cylinders. That is where the magic is happening, and where where um, I think is is an enormous potential. So, and and you read more and more about the networked organization uh, that uh, it goes away from this hierarchies and silos, and and more and more you are doing ad hoc, community based uh, solutions around uh, business problems. And, and so, so I think that the community management will get a much higher viewpoint in the organization uh, as something that helps an organization to stay competitive and stay successful. You kind of made me smile when you were talking about this because I've been to a number of shows where there was an active community. And usually the community room is like buried in like the bowels of the conference somewhere. Like, you know, it's like in the basement or it's in some weird unheated room or whatever. And, and there's always a lot of really passionate people there. Um, but they also don't always seem like they get out very much. Right. And, and what you're describing just now is totally the opposite of that. Right. It, it's that sense that wherever you would go, within a conference, you would see the presence of, of such individuals. They would be sort of, I, I, I don't want to sound negative, but they will sort of infest everything. And, and it wouldn't be so much a room in the way back somewhere, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I wrote a po- blog post about how, how to get the best keynote. Well, what we did with the mentors is they, we... We pinked the mentors. What do you want to hear on the keynote? And select, uh, selected that. And then the, the the people that are working on the keynote were then ha- having a session with the mentors and going through the points. Okay, this is why is that interesting? Oh, yeah. And is there anybody who could present and then have these community members do present what they have done as customers or as, as a partner solution? And that makes such a difference then to the keynote. And, and, and so any aspects where you can bring the customer and the, and the community voice and do it, it's, and, and it is that competitive advantage where uh, everything else more or less can be copied and, and, and uh, made cheaper and so on. But if you have a strong engaged community where people uh, feel at home and 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 feel passion and and my latest realization is also that so for for many many years i was focusing on passion but what is really bringing out the passion in people is if you can align what you're doing with purpose so back in the day and that was always the the, the cool thing that marilyn pratt was doing um well she brought in the Doctors Without Borders real-world data to her data wizard phone. So the experts were coming together and hacking around, uh, doing data visualization. 
around real world data from Doctors Without Borders. And, and people were super excited in being part of that because they knew, oh, what I'm doing right now is influencing and helping Doctors Without Borders to be more effective or efficient. And, and, and so it wasn't about, oh, a hackathon around, oh, yeah, help us improve our, our software, uh, but it was improve the world. And that purpose of the people to tap into that, that brings out the passion and that uh, gives you a deep engagement and a blog post in the making around that one. Excellent. Well, I think that's a perfect note to end on. Uh, what is your uh, blog URL for people? Uh, it's finna.com. Perfect. And uh, good luck with your goals for the playful enterprise. That's that's a high bar you've set. If you can make the enterprise playful, you will have, I think, ac- accomplished quite a lot in, in one lifetime. So for the, so oh, for, um, are we going to do our outro? Do you want to have the outro? Yeah. Wait, do you have something to say first? or? No, no, no. Um, I thought he wants to, to also ask about SAP some more, but we can do that in another podcast. Well, yeah, I don't know if, if, is there anything more that we, I mean, we covered a lot of the history. Was there anything more you wanted to talk about? or? Well, I, I think that uh, being away from SAP a little bit, um, one thing that, that I realize, and, and I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure about whether SAP is realizing that. I think that that realization of oh uh, we have to switch to a network organization, and that is crossing boundaries not only between the silos within the, uh, a company but also to the partners, to the customers, to to individual consultants, which we did with the mentors. Um, and I think that that SAP has an enormous opportunity to. Um, be that connector and to be that uh, trusted advisor and and say that that they say hey we as sap we know the world is accelerating accelerating change is coming like crazy but if you are working with us we will make sure that you are successful and 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 i think um more or less finding these uh, uh, win-win situations and, 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 and more or less make sure that we don't squeeze our customers or SAP, um, you know, to have the quarterly success, focus on uh, being that trusted advisor and have that strong community that is supporting them. And, and I would like to see more of, of, of that happening. I think SAP is doing a lot there, uh, but I think there could be so much more um, in that regard. And, 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 and uh, to make sure that we pick up the SAP customers where they are and bring them into the new world and, and help them be successful there. And when they are successful, SAP is successful. And, and I think with Ariba that is creating that business network, again, worldwide, enormous opportunities are there. Uh, and so that, that is something that um, I think could, could, could be stressed a little bit more. Yeah, I think uh, just, like, just like most companies that I – that I deal with, I think SAP like has negative tendencies that concern me and, and, and tendencies I really like. And I think what you and I were talking about the history is a lot of the best of what SAP has been. Um, you know, people have written off SAP a lot of times as a legacy player, you know, and SAP is trying to change that from a techno technology perspective, but I would encourage SAP to think about this from a cultural perspective as well because you were a leader in community and transparency and, and edgy open dialogue. And you, you don't want to back down from that uh, just because some of the key players in that have moved on from the organization and so on. Um, right. And, and I, and I will say that I run into a lot of people at SAP who aren't comfortable with, with more of what you're talking about, the more 
sort of network, sort of trusting, sort of, you know, sort of open thinking kind of things. Right. Um, and, and I think it takes a certain cultural comfort level to do that. And so hopefully SAP can find its mojo with that because there's a pretty proud history there, to be honest. I mean, when you look back, they're one of the first companies to do it. Right. Um, now I think you can point to a lot of open source communities that might have actually sort of moved ahead in certain ways. Um, and right. it's encouraging to see SAP engaging more with open source communities on a variety of fronts as well. So I, I think, you know, as far as SAP is concerned, I think there's some, some different forks in the road ahead and there's still a lot of opportunity, but I would want to see some, some bold initiative uh, around that. Any uh, other comments on that? No, I, I, I totally, totally agree. Um, there's an enormous opportunity there, and and SAP to to win or to lose, and and I hope they choose wisely. Indeed. So, Mark, for the last time from the treehouse, this is... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm more, more getting into the witness protection program, uh, into the shade, and uh, 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 over here, extra for today, I hung up the... Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, there it is. Is it coming out? <sighs> yeah, <sighs> As that basically a, means if you made it to the end, you're nuts. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks always, a lot, Mark. Always a pleasure. Yeah, that was good times. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.